Hello, welcome back to my video series um, disassembly of the original J44 R24 turbojet engine. Uh, I'm going to now go through some of the uh, over some of the parts and pieces removed from the engine showing uh, as is condition and then uh, I'll show you some that I've uh, cleaned up and kind of what the plan is. Uh, I'll try to go over some of that to cap recap. Some of the disassembly was not videoed um, just due to the circumstances and sorry there's a, little, a few things but majority of it we captured. Alright so I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and we'll hand, help, hand hold the camera and let's look over some of these parts here. Um, in particular here we'll start with the uh, hot end of the engine, the hot section as it's called which is the turbine nozzle and on back. Uh, that'll be the turbine nozzle, the actual turbine rotor or wheel assembly, um, and some other parts related to it. Okay. Alrighty, here are um, some components removed from the uh, hot section, the rear end of the engine. So let's uh, look at each one of these. Alright. This is the uh, original problem or cause for disassembly, is this piece here. This is the turbine nozzle or turbine stator. And this is uh, what the hot gases encounter after leaving the combustion chamber or combustor. These veins redirect the gas from axial flowing along the length of the engine to in, uh, more efficiently strike the turbine veins. And that will, or turbine blades, I guess or blades. Boy, that's a good one. Let, let uh, Graham J9101 and uh, J, I think they've discussed this before. What what constitute a what constitutes a vein and what constitutes a blade? I think is a vein stationary and a blade is moving. Is that correct? All right. So that being discussed, these would be veins. They're stationary. This is attached to the case. There's a boss, there's three bosses like this where a pin or a large bolt with a boss on the end of it engages and this locks this in place. So this does not move. And then here you can see this damage. Um, this obviously is eroding away from too much heat. And then if we go to the other side of this, we can see, I think you can see the severe warpage of both the inner and outer rings. This side is the side that is uh, facing toward the front of the engine or that the hot gas is going this direction, strike that. So we're thinking a fuel issue, Some, um, not sure, Rick said that's yet to be determined. But So this part had to go, it's absolutely shot, all right, obviously. Here is a uh, view from the combustion chamber in, or the front of the engine, looking back at the turbine stator turbine nozzle and you can see again here how badly these are eroded away so at that point we think what's well, been that hot okay probably this heat has been applied also to this turbine wheel and if you look at the the blades I think we'll call them you can see here this pattern there's a pattern of this darker area and then here it transitions to like a, a lighter light gray color right before the root. These are individual blades but they are welded to this disc. Uh, it's pretty amazing how they ever would do that and then those little welds hold. If you look there's really tiny really close there are a little like almost a hairline gap here between these each one of these blades. Let's see right here at my finger see that line that is a fine fine thin gap between the root of that blade and the root of that blade. This is a obviously a hardened steel disc uh, and this stub shaft is part of this disc. This is uh, the back side of the turbine wheel that would be towards the back of the engine and this stub shaft is what fits into the inner race of the rear rear bearing. So this supports the back of the inch shaft, the whole rotating assembly. Uh, thinking that it's been hot as well as that turbine nozzle, we're just going to replace this too. And I was able to find parts engines, as I said in a previous video. So we have a set from the same engine um, 
a turbine wheel and a new turbine nozzle to put in uh, this engine. All right, and then here we have what's called an abradable ring. This is the shroud, turbine shroud, I believe actually it's called. It's an abradable surface. It's actually called a turbine shroud, and it surrounds the tips of the uh, turbine blades. And it's a very, very close fit between the inside of this surface and the outside of these blades. As you can see, there's a very small, we can move this shroud just a little bit sideways. But there's very, very little clearance between the tip of those blades and the inside of this shroud. And obviously, there are specs for this, which we checked with feeler gauges all the way around here. Um, we're hoping that's not a problem because the only way to that can be adjusted is if generally it's right and if it gets too tight it's because the blades of the turbine, the turbine wheel are stretching or creeping and that can be caused from age and heat. Uh, the hotter it gets the easier it is for the, the metal to stretch and then this is spinning at a high RPM they tend to grow so that would actually close this gap here between the tip of this blades and the inside of this shroud. This is obviously nowhere near hitting but uh, that's a pretty ring to it doesn't it? Just like fine crystal you got fine steel. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway this is not a clearance issue and it doesn't look like it you know in any way shape or form that there's going to be a problem with these but we're going to use this this nozzle will be used and we're going to test this with the new turbine wheel to make sure it fits okay uh, if it doesn't then you know I'm not sure what to say about that but you know let's think positive all right so that takes care of a pretty good amount of the major components of the hot end of this engine rear section uh, the little other device you saw me grab this earlier laying here is this. This is the, that is the simple uh, triple uh, thermocouple assembly. It's got three thermocouples in this one little screw in or one module here. <laughs> and if you look, you can see the individual, they're different lengths. See, you got this one, this one, and this one. And what that does is that captures temperature in three different areas of the gas path. Uh, most engines have these placed all the way around in a, like at least four of them. And they might just be single thermocouples and not a triple, but they'll have four of them spray it all the way around the circle, circumference evenly. For some reason, this engine in its simplicity just has this one probe. And you see it has three individual leads and they come together to your terminals. And these connect to the exhaust gas temperature indicator which you would be in uh, on a console somewhere or if an airplane it would be in a cockpit obviously and that is used to monitor the temperature of the exhaust gas which is very critical on these engines as we've been told many times lots of heat is bad bad well this will take care of the uh, hot end of the engine uh, as far as uh, major components and we'll show you some other components and parts removed and uh, cover those. Here are a few components related to the rear bearing of this engine and we can see basically, um, let's try to get up here at the camera, this would be the rear bearing housing and then this is the rear bearing and it is a, a ball bearing with a swivel capability. As you can see this inner, there's actually three races here. We got the inner race, and then this ring here contains the actual balls, the ball bearings. And then we have an outer race, which the balls roll on. And then we have this outer outer race, which is a swiveling capability. What that allows that to do is that allows for a minor misalignment, ax axial misalignment in the case over the length of the engine. That's uh, basically though, um, this bearing fits in here in this housing. And then we have uh, a series of covers. And mind you, these have not all been, have not been cleaned. So let's, with that bearing lightly pressed in there, we have this cover. 
some other assorted steel rings and gaskets and another cover. Basically, we're trying to protect. Mind you, this is all with at the very back of the right up behind this turbine wheel we saw earlier. So it's very hot around here. So the air circulation and the shielding and isolation keeps the bearing cool. We remove all this again. The housing, if you'll notice, has two threaded holes in the back of it. And what that allows us to do, if we turn this over, you can see it also has fins, cooling fins. And then all of that is encased in this cover. So this is what we're looking at. All you, this is like where the shaft, stub shaft on the back of that turbine wheel, turbine rotor goes right there. Okay. Everything else is hidden within here. I think actually this small cover goes here. There's a ring, that ring, there's a gasket. There's all kinds of things that go here. Okay. So this whole compartment is cooled, is flooded with cooling air. These two holes here, one is for uh, air, one is for air, air only. Bleed air from the compressor is used as a cooling blast on the ball bearing. The other is a mix of air and oil. And this engine does not have a circulating oil system. It does not have recovery of the oil. It is a loss system or the oil is basically burned or expelled as it's used. It's a very, very finely metered and mixed with air to make a mist of oil that is continuously blasted through an orifice that threads into this thread. The other side has just an orifice that allows just strictly air to go up there. So as the bearing is spinning on the other side in, in this housing, we can see here, there's the hole, there are the holes where the orifices go. They're blasting right at this bearing, at the ball bearings, a, a mist of oil and, and cooling air to keep that bearing happy. The compressor bearing, which is basically the same style bearing, operates the same way except it just has only an oil mist uh, orifice. It does not have a cooling air because obviously the compressor end is a lot, lot happier. But back here where all this heat is, they uh, decided to go ahead and use a... Uh, a blast of air along with the oil mist to help keep the bearing cool. There's a brief once over of the uh, turbine bearing or rear bearing of this engine. Let's show real quick the detail. I, I mentioned the orifices and the oil lines. Well here are the orifices, orifices that screw into this housing. These thread in. If you notice this one has a very a pretty small opening. Here's the other one. Oop, let's get this way here. And it has a much larger opening, as you can see. This was for air, and th this one's for the oil mist. So with both of those threaded into this, with both of those threaded into the bearing housing, it would be oriented like this. You see they got A in fitting, A in line fittings. We have this assembly, which is a little set of tubes welded, stainless steel tubes welded to a block. Uh, it's got flared fittings. These are gauge right here. Okay. And then what this does is this passes through one of the struts of the rear, the turbine housing, nozzle, rear tail housing of the engine. It passes through one of the hollow uh, struts to the outside of the engine, which is here. And as you can see, there's a passages are drilled through this block. And there's a gasket. It mates with a similar block and a bolt. Pulls them together and attaches them to the rear frame of the engine and that allows us to connect to the source of oil and air feed, feeding. That is uh, the way the oil and air pass from the outside of the engine into the bearing housing. We cover the turbine wheel or rotor assembly, the turbine nozzle or stator assembly, yeah, the rear bearing and its related uh, plumbing, mounting, uh, some of the cooling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, the next video here soon, getting it together now, part two. 
which will uh, cover uh, fuel nozzles, the fuel manifold, and uh, then the uh, compressor, and maybe the front bearing. Like I said, I try not to get these to be too long. I'm going to try to be more creative um, on part two's uh, introduction and conclusion. I hope you enjoy that. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.